Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Hello, greetings, and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings on the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is the first in my series on effective management of PLSQL based applications. In other words, this series is not about writing PLSQL code per se, but what you do with it once you've written it. How do you manage it? How do you store it in files? How do you take advantage of the underlying architecture of PLSQL to make the most of the code you've written? And this topic is introduction and overview. So effective management of PLSQL applications. I'm going to talk, in fact, in this introductory lesson of where and how to store code, really cover some basics. Next, we'll move on to making the most of the PLSQL compiler. In Oracle 10G, Oracle added automatic optimization, compile time warnings, and conditional compilation, really fantastic features that you should know about and take advantage of in your development work. We'll take a look at how to use the data dictionary views to analyze your code, understand what you've written, how you can improve it more effectively. We'll take a look at analyzing memory usage of PLSQL code. It's critical to know the difference between SGA memory, system global area, and process global area memory. And we'll finish up by talking about how Oracle manages dependencies and automatically invalidates and recompiles code for you and what you need to do to minimize the invalidations and understand all those dependencies. So starting with the basics, where and how to store source code. First of all, and I hopefully this is just totally basic and you just look at this and you scoff that I would even mention it, but make sure that you're using a version control software with your code. Many development organizations still don't have version control in place, so they, may, they might make copies of directories and give names to the directories by dates, or not do any of that, and then you can run into many, many problems like losing updates, not being able to go back to a previous version when you need to fix a bug, many issues. So there are many different source control, version control software packages out there, some free, some commercial. Make sure you've got something in place. Perform backups regularly. You can never be too paranoid about losing work. I'm sure you've all had the experience of losing something. And I'm not even just talking about big backups. Obviously, you need to have automated backups in place every night. Your source code is backed up and so on. But it's never too soon to make a backup. You can just copy your files to a different directory. Zip up your code and send it to a friend. You've got an off-site backup that way. Even these very simple occasional actions can save you a lot of grief because sometimes the loss is just a matter of the last five minutes of work or the last half hour, but you've lost all sorts of detail changes. Save often, make copies, and be prepared. Don't trust the database. Trust files. Now obviously, as PLSQL developers, we spend a lot of time working with the Oracle database. We know how powerful and effective it is. On the other hand, do you really want to store the original version of your code in the database? Hopefully, again, you're saying to yourself, why is Stephen telling me this? Obviously, you would never do that. But I still do run into organizations that do not tell people to save their code to files, the original source code, but instead compile them directly into the database. Well, what's the problem with doing that? It's too easy to lose updates. So we're all working out of the same schema. I make some changes and compile my code into the database, there's the latest version of the code, but what if somebody else is working on that same piece of code at the same time and then compiles their code after I've compiled my code? I lose my changes. Does that sound ridiculous? It is ridiculous, but I've actually talked to developers for whom that has happened. Always save your code to files and then check in and check out those files in your version control system. Now, depending on the editor you use, for example, Toad, SQL Navigator from Quest, they have integration directly into version control systems. So you don't always have to move outside of your IDE to accomplish these tasks. Ideally, it's all in one integrated environment. But don't rely on the database as your repository for your code. In addition, take advantage of the file extensions to provide more information about what's in the file. 
many developers, especially those who have been around a long time and, and have lived with SQL Plus for years, use the .SQL extension for pretty much everything they do. Well, that's not such a great idea because you lose knowledge about the contents of the file. Here are some examples of what I do. PCAST for package spec, PKB for package body, VW for view, MV for materialized view, OT for object type, stored function, stored procedure, or alternatively FNC for function, PRC for procedure, TST for test files, test scripts, performance analysis scripts, or testing scripts. Separate type and package specs and bodies. So when you're building a package spec or a package or an object type, generally speaking what you want to do is separate out all your package spec and bodies. Let's take a look. This is actually the back-end code for um, the PL SQL challenge. So I've got a number of PKS files, these are the package specs, and then the PKB files are my package bodies. And the reason I do this is that I want to be able to make changes to one and not the other and be able to recompile one without affecting the other. Generally speaking, the package specifications tend to stabilize relatively quickly, but then we're constantly making changes to the package body. Well, at least in the older versions of Oracle, if I recompile a package spec, even if the code hasn't changed, Oracle will invalidate all the programs that reference that package, and you'll have to go through the recompilation process. And you, you just get a lot more flexibility in maintaining your code by separating these elements into separate files. Now, for more information about package file extensions and how to standardize your environment, I do suggest that you check out the PL SQL standards area on PL SQL Obsession. So, to sum up and obviously to get started on the main topics in the series, if you have a full understanding of how PL SQL works, how it's architected, how to organize yourself, if you have an awareness of the many data dictionary views that are available to you, and with a good set of scripts, you can very effectively manage your PL SQL code, making it easier to analyze the impact of change and apply those changes more easily across your code base. Now, obviously, we've just gotten started here. I've given you some very basic advice about working with your source code in files. Make sure you're using version control software. Make sure you back up your code. Make sure you save your code to files. Now, once you've got that in place, then go exploring through all these great aspects of effective management of PL SQL code.